Flying your drone in the winter is risky. Rain, snow, storms. Should you pack your drone away ready for the spring? Absolutely not. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to fly your drones safely this winter. So I love flying my drones over the winter months. Yes, it is riskier, but the reward is great as well. I can get some fantastic photos and videos on my drones filming in the winter, but you definitely have to follow some advice as well. So let's get into number one. No matter which drone you've got, having more than one battery is going to make your life so much easier when you go off and filming. You're not gonna be rushing the shots, your experience is going to be a lot better. And in the cold weather, make sure that your drone batteries are 100% charged the day before, or maybe a couple of hours before you go off and film, just put these on charge so they're at 100%. These drone batteries will discharge when they're in the case. So if you charged your drone batteries maybe five, six, seven days ago, and then you go off and actually film, these drone batteries will no longer be 100%, they might be on like 50, 60%. And because it's cold weather, that battery drain is going to go down a lot faster. So make sure whatever drone you've got, you fully charge these batteries to at 100% when you go off and fly. And due to these operating temperatures, you're not going to get the same amount of flight time on any of these drones. So the Mini 4 Pro, on a good day, you're going to get between 20 and 25 minutes in real world flying from one of the standard batteries but in cold weather temperatures, expect that to be around about 15 minutes. And on the DJI Air 3, on a good day, 30, 35 minutes, you can expect on one of these really good batteries on the DJI Air 3. But again, in cold weather temperatures, you're gonna be looking around about the 25 minute mark. But also don't forget, this depends on your actual altitude. So if you're just at sea level, then those are going to be quite realistic numbers. But if you're at the top of a mountain, you're hiking, you're gonna be higher up. Generally, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. So that battery drain is going to go down even faster. Now I love researching different unique spots all around the world where I can take these drones and capture some great photos and videos. So plan ahead. Make sure that you're actually looking in different areas. Google Maps is good for this. You've got DJI Fly Spots built into the DJI app or you could simply just rock up to that area where you know it's quite a scenic area. But if you've done no research and you actually get to one of the areas with these drones, don't just get the drone in the air and go off and fly in and kind of like thinking, right, what should I film now? Because the second you actually start one of these drone motors in cold conditions, that battery drain is going to start going down. So when you get there, keep your drone in the bag and have a look in that area and think, right, what do I want to actually film here? What do I want to take photos of? Right, that looks really good there. I want to make sure I get some shots there. There's some really cool clouds just coming over there. So I want to take a hyperlapse. I'll probably do that first. So have a bit of a plan. So when you do take this drone off, you are maximizing that battery percentage. You're trying to get as much as you can out of each battery. None of the consumer drones that DJI offer are actually waterproof, which means you need to understand the risks when you're flying in bad weather conditions. If you live in the UK, you could potentially be grounded all winter. So you need to understand these risks. On the DJI Mini 4 Pro, none of the ports are covered. The SD card slot, the charging port are both exposed. On the DJI Air 3, it's slightly better because you have this little slot on the back. You can just push that in. And that means then that the charging port and the SD slot are both covered. Now I've flown all of these drones in pretty bad conditions in light rain, snow, really strong winds, and they've all survived and been absolutely fine. So they can withstand a little bit. Now obviously DJI aren't going to say that to you. So you need to understand Understand that risk and it's on you but if you're in light rain bit of snow just get them shots and then bring the drone back to you don't just think well, I've got to get it back straight away now obviously if you're flying your drone in really bad pouring down conditions heavy snow fog then that's a completely different story get that drone landed as soon as possible because if you get any moisture water inside of here mess up the electric system it's not going to end well hopefully one day we will see a consumer drone from DJI that is actually water resistant we've seen it with phones now over the last few years and this is something which I feel is certainly missing from these DJI drones. But if you get light rain, a bit of light snow, get these shots, it looks really cool. Get them, bring the drone back to you, and then just get a cloth, wipe it down, take the battery out, and it'll be absolutely fine, I'm sure. Now the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3 have the same operating temperature, so down to minus 10 degrees. If you actually fly in cooler conditions than that, then technically the DJI refresh program wouldn't cover you if you had some kind of problem with your drones, if you're flying in like minus 20. So be super careful with that, check the temperature. But what you really need to be careful on 
is actually icing on the propellers. Now this doesn't even need to be like minus 10 to happen, it just needs to have visible moisture in the air like fog or low clouds. You could fly your drone through one of them and then you could start seeing ice forming on these propellers. But the problem is, is you won't physically see it. You might get some sort of warning message. You might feel that this drone isn't performing or moving like it should do. It might feel on the sticks a bit heavier. And if you feel any of that, you need to bring that drone in straight away. But the number one thing to avoid all of this is don't fly through any fog and don't fly through any low clouds either, certainly when it's cool in cold conditions. And worst case scenarios is you'll get actually large buildups of ice on these propellers, which means that propeller could stop spinning and then all that's gonna happen then, it's gonna fall out of the sky. And if you're enjoying this video so far, just do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help out get this video to more people. And if you're enjoying these tips, this is just one tip out of loads available on my DJI cheat sheets that are available on my website. So they're available for all of these different DJI drones and they help you get the very most out of it. So all the different settings to change, how to get the very best photos and videos. And all these are fantastic because when you're out actually flying your drone in the middle of nowhere, it could be anywhere, you forget all of these features and how to get the very most out of it. So this is a digital download, you get to keep it on your phone, you can print it out and then you can refer to all of these different cheat sheets when you're actually out flying your drone. If you're going to go and check it out, I'm going to link it at the top of the description. Now during any time, but especially over the winter, the weather can be super unpredictable and these drones don't like the wind. So I always use a free weather app. It's called UAV Forecast. You can get this on any of the app stores completely free. I use this all the time. They've never sponsored one of these videos, so this is not sponsored. I just highly recommend it. And this is fantastic because I can go into here and I can actually look at the wind speed, the wind direction, the wind gusts at certain heights. And I can also look in different locations and see what the weather's like there as well. I've flown both of these drones in over 40 miles an hour winds. And the Mini 4 Pro, it is pretty vulnerable to strong winds. So it does a remarkable job at keeping stable in the winds but actually flying it is a completely different story so because it's much smaller much smaller propellers it's going to struggle in strong winds the DJI Air 3 is much better really strong much bigger propellers and this will give you a lot more confidence in those windy areas but a good tip for you if it is pretty windy outside go and check the weather conditions on this free app and then get one of these drones let's just say the Mini 4 Pro for example because this is the most vulnerable actually take it off and actually let it sit and hover for about 30 30 seconds at say 30 meters in height, 100 feet. And then, then that will give you the advantage that you've got full GPS lock, you've got full return to home if something goes wrong, but just actually let it hover and then look at it and just see, is it stable? Is it hovering okay? Have a look on the controller. Look in the bottom left hand corner at the attitude indicator. Is that drone getting blown around all over the place? You can even look at the sensors now by swiping to the right. And then you can look at these obstacle avoidance sensors. Is this drone getting battered? If it is, bring it back down, move to a different location or try again another day. It's not worth the risk. And also don't forget in different locations like tops of mountains, over cliffs, over the sea, that wind is gonna be a lot more volatile and also unpredictable. It could be swirling in different directions. So the wind and these drones, you do not want a fly away. If you actually plan and prepare, it's never gonna happen. Just make sure you follow this advice and that shouldn't happen to you. And back onto batteries, you want to make sure that these batteries aren't super cold. This could then cause battery voltage issues and also your battery drain is going to be a lot worse. So to keep these batteries warm the night before, to make sure you're keeping these batteries stored inside of your house, not like a shed or a garage. And then when you're on way to that location, just keep these in your drone bag or any bag inside of your car. Now if I was flying the Mini 4 Pro and I've got another battery lined up, Rather than keeping these batteries like on top of my car or in the boots exposed to all these elements, I could just keep these in my pocket. I could get like one of those hand warmers, keep that in that same pocket. Or what you could do in really cold conditions is you could get this drone battery and just keep it under your arm while you're flying. And then naturally your body temperature will keep this drone battery fairly warm. And then you can just replace that into that drone when it comes down. And get into a habit of checking your controller regularly as well. So you'll notice in the top left hand corner, if you get any error messages, it could be battery voltage issues, battery temperature, just bring that drone back, investigate, maybe swap batteries out just to be on that safe side. And you also notice where your battery icon is in the top right hand corner. You can actually click on that and it will show you the exact times, what's well, like a prediction of how long you've got left on each of these batteries on your drone. And if you notice, say for example, it says 14 minutes and then you check again in like 10 seconds and it's going 
Hang on, it's now saying five minutes. Why is that dropping so severe? Are you in sports mode flying really fast? Is there an issue with the drones? Just bring it back and investigate. It's always best to be on the safe side. And I've touched on these voltage issues and it happens a lot in either really cold conditions or really hot conditions. And what happens is the drone will actually give you a prediction on that battery life. It isn't always accurate. And this happens majority of time I've noticed when you're flying in sports mode. So in really cold conditions, really warm conditions, just use normal or cine to avoid any voltage problems. Now this one might shock you, but I would consider turning off your obstacle avoidance sensors. So why? Well, if you're flying and all of a sudden there's like some light rain or light snow, some snowflakes coming down, you're going to get some fantastic footage for a few minutes and then you're going to bring that drone back. But because these have got fantastic obstacle avoidance sensors on them all around the drone, they might actually see these snowflakes coming down and actually start trying to swerve around them and avoid them. That could cause some issues with your filming. So I would then, if it's safe and there's no obstacles in that area, turn your obstacle avoidance off get this shot and then once you've done that, put them back on and then bring it back to land. If you're flying these drones, this has happened to me, um, and then all of a sudden some fog gets blown in and you're potentially at say, say you're at 100 meters in height, so you're pretty high up and then this fog comes down really low and you want to bring your drone down. So let's just say for instance, you're at 100 meters in height and you want to land your drone, but all of a sudden this fog has come in and it's sitting round about here. So you've got to actually now bring your drone down to land. But as it goes through this fog, potentially what can happen is that these landing sensors detect the ground. And this could think that the fog is the ground. And then you will hear that horrible message saying drone landing, and it's actually landing when it's still 30, 40 meters in the air. Now, thankfully we have seen recently a firmware update where we can turn this down position sensor off. So all you need to do is go into your settings, scroll all the way down to advanced safety settings, and then you'll see at the bottom of that menu, the option to turn it off. So then you can bring your drone down. It won't detect anything in that fog. It'll keep coming down, but super important, just before it actually hits the ground, go back onto your settings and turn it back on. Because if you don't, that drone will come down really fast. You don't want that to happen. So turn it back on and then it will actually have then a really nice, soft and smooth landing. Condensation can happen and it's an absolute pain if it does happen on your drones, whether in the air or afterwards. But what about when you bring your drone home? You've had this really successful day of capturing all this fantastic footage. It's freezing cold. You've raced back home. You've just got home and then you get the log fire on. You get your drones and you actually put your drones on the floor next to that log fire. You go into the kitchen and you go and make a hot chocolate. So that temperature change has gone from like minus five conditions outside to really warm next is log fire and all that's going to happen is it's going to then be condensation on this lens and that can be a huge problem once you get that condensation on the actual internal lens it can be quite painful and a problem to actually get that removed so what i would suggest is is when you come home just get your drones, keep them in that drone bag and just leave them in that house, that room, not near that log fire, just anywhere. So it's actually getting used to room temperature, but it's not being exposed to like extreme heat from really cold to really hot, super fast. And that will then avoid any condensation on these drones. So I really do hope that helps you out flying your drone in the winter months. Go and get some fantastic shots, great photos, videos. Just hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe because we've got loads more content coming really soon. And if you're not done there, you want to watch two more drone videos that are on the screen right now. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.